Good morning, everyone. We gather today, we celebrate Christmas season, of course, but we also celebrate St. Raymond of Penefort, who died in 1275, a Dominican, second master of the order, after Dominic himself, a master of canon law, collated canon law, the great work in the area of uh, the sacrament of penance, and is the patron saint of lawyers, and so uh, one of the patron saints for lawyers. So as we remember St. Raymond, we bring our needs, our intentions this Christmas Day, and we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. To prepare ourselves once again to come to the altar to celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries, we pause to acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, the light to all nations, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, the Savior of the world, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son raised up your eternal light for all nations, grant that your people may come to acknowledge the full splendor of their Redeemer, that bathed evermore in his radiance they may reach everlasting glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we love God because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. The word of the Lord. Our response is, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. From fraud and violence he shall redeem them, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. May they be prayed for continually, day by day shall they bless him. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the sun his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed, all the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Yeah. 
to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went, according to his custom, into a synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up and read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and to the recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently upon him. He said to them, Today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him. And were amazed at the gracious words which came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. Two thoughts to share with you today. First, the Gospel. As we slowly bring the Christmas season to an end, we really see in the Gospel today Jesus doing what you and I probably do our own lives, both professionally and as we're looking perhaps for professionals in our life. What are the two criteria that uh, we look for if we're looking to hire someone or to engage someone's services. We look for their reputation and their good references, right? Kind of what we basically look for. We want people working for us, if they're employees or contractors, have a good reputation, a good name about them. And uh, ultimately, we want them not only to have that good reputation, but to, to uh, possess being exactly who they're proposed to be. Well, that's exactly what's going on in the Gospel. We hear very clearly Jesus has got a good reputation. The uh, news of Him spread throughout the region. At the very end we hear people listen to the words that graciously fell from His lips. Very good reputation. But Jesus in the very Gospel, definitely identifies that he is who he is purported to be. He quotes the prophet Isaiah, the Messianic prophecy, and in saying today these words fulfilled in your hearing, he is basically saying, I am he. He identifies himself exactly to be who his reputation is calling him to be. So we think about that. And in our own lives, what is our own reputation? And uh, do the words and actions clearly identify us as being that disciple of Christ? Take all that to the events of yesterday. All of what we've seen in our nation and the capital. And they probably hold a position slightly different than what we've heard in the media. I'm sure that shocks you. Uh, what happened yesterday was wrong. 
no question. But really, was it any different than what we saw happen in May or June in our own city? Is it any different than throwing a basket burning through the window of City Hall in downtown Buffalo? Is it any different than toppling statues and defacing them? This is nothing new that happened yesterday. The only thing new is that it happened at the capital of our country rather than in the city halls of various cities. And yet, people who were very vocal yesterday in denouncing what happened, some of them were the very same people who applauded all of what went on in May and June. That we paid attention to what is going on. And if not, we better start. We need to really see clearly what is taking place in our own nation, in our own time. What happened in May and June was wrong, and what happened last night was wrong, yesterday during the day, I should say. None of it, none of it speaks of Jesus Christ. What is it that we hear in the very first reading? If someone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he's a liar. This is the commandment we have. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. The actions in May and June and on our own Williamsville here, what happened on Maple Road with people with hockey sticks beating cars as they drove down the road, does not speak of any love of brother. And because of that, it could not have been speaking of God. Just as of what happened last yesterday at the Capitol, did not speak of love of brother, nor did it speak of love of God. We need to intensely pray for our nation. At one time, we were called one nation under God. I do not believe that is exactly true any longer. We desire to call upon God in this country when we find it convenient, but we do not choose to follow his values of the love of God, the love of neighbor, from that moment of conception to the moment of natural death, we do not desire to follow the love of God in all facets. Rather, rather we pick and we choose. We better think carefully and examine carefully what is going on. Because, in my humble opinion, it is very brave and serious. All of last year, and again the beginnings, of this. We need to pray and we need to reflect. We turn, we offer our needs, our intentions to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you as your people of faith, desiring to be consistent in our love of you and articulating that love for you and our love for one another. Please hear our needs and petitions. Help us on our way. For our church throughout the world, for her leaders and members that all of the baptized genuinely strive for that love of neighbor and to allow that love of neighbor to express the love we have for God. We pray to you, Lord, for our nation to truly be once again a nation under God, that the laws enacted in this society are those abiding by the very word that our elected officials place their hand upon. For the newly elected, those who continue to serve in office, to reflect carefully upon the Word of God and bring this nation back to that Word, we pray to you, Lord. For peace on our own city streets, for peace in our nation, for peace among the nations of the world, for the ability of those who are so outraged to truly reflect upon peace which comes only from that word of the Lord. We pray to you, Lord. For all of those who are ill, particularly with the coronavirus, and for those who are ill and suffering in any way, if it be a short-term illness and surgery or long-term chronic care, for their hope and the power of healing, for those in need of employment, for those suffering with various types of addictions and addictive behaviors, for those who are simply 
but deeply overwhelmed by the burdens of daily life. For their hope, their power, and healing, we pray to you, Lord. For Barbara Harrigan, for whom the Mass was offered this morning, and for all of the souls of the faithful departed to truly share in God's mercy and eternal life, we pray to you, O Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer to you the many needs and intentions. Humbly we pray, hear us and help us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you've revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he approached and appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more giving thanks. Gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, Saint Raymond, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another now the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Have a good day, everyone.